Let's talk about microphones, but maybe not the first microphones that come to mind. No, we're not talking about the latest and greatest concert experience or podcasting technology. No, we're exploring the world of automotive microphones and not just any automotive microphones. We're talking about MEMS microphones. Did you know that the average new car has up to eight microphones? And those microphones aren't just for inside the car. Oh yes, my friends, we're going to investigate all of this and more. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. MEMS-based microphone technology can bring a variety of benefits to automotive applications. In this episode of Chalk Talk, I chat with James Sterling from Infineon about the components included in a MEMS microphone system, the roles that frequency and sensitivity play in microphone-enhanced automotive systems, and the benefits that Infineon's Sensive Automotive Qualified Microphones bring to interior and exterior automotive applications. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, James. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for putting it all together. Sure thing. Okay, so we're talking about the Zensive MEMS microphones, which are a great fit for automotive applications today. But James, before we get into the details, what makes MEMS technology a good fit for these kinds of applications? Well, in general, what we try to achieve with the MEMS microphone in the automotive space was we wanted to bring something to market that could be processed in a standard reflow operation. You know, that's the one of the major issues with using an ECM or a condenser microphone is that it simply can't handle high temperatures. And so with the MEMS product, we're able to bring something to market that can be processed in a standard reflow operation and in an automated PCB assembly process. Now, of course, there are other benefits. They're certainly much more stable and their performance is much better. The sensitivity is better over temperature and lifetime and designed and trimmed to have very matched amplitude and phases within the packaging themselves. Each microphone next to the one next to it has been trimmed to be a good match. They're, of course, much smaller than an electric condenser microphone, but give you the same or better performance. And then lastly is the vibration sensitivity. So these electric condenser microphones, they have a great deal of mass to them and they are sensitive to vibration. In manufacturing and in the environment, they tend to be damaged under vibration. And so this is a major benefit of having a smaller, lighter MEMS product. That makes sense. Now, James, Infineon offers a complete microphone system, right? So talk to me about the various components included in these systems. Yeah, so what you're looking at in that prior photo is kind of the back side of the device. And here you see the back and the front. And inside of this package is actually the MEMS product itself, this micro-machined capacitor that has a membrane and a back plate. And this is the capacitor itself, which is sensitive to the acoustic waves and modulation. And then with that is an ASIC, a separate chip, and it has its charge pump and for the membrane itself and the amplifier stages, the LDO, and then the calibration logic. And then that's all combined together in a single package that protects the device, but also it's performing the acoustic back volume for the microphone itself in addition to having a form that can be in a pick and place operation. We've had a long history in the automotive market. We tend to do all of our processings ourselves. And so every part of this assembly, even though it's made up basically of three independent pieces, is all building blocks put together by Infineon. Fantastic. Now let's circle back to ECM mics versus MEMS microphones. How do they compare when it comes to frequency response? Yeah, there are certain performance and sensitivity and temperature benefits to a MEMS microphone and frequency response is one of them. So if you look at a standard ECM microphone, 
just grab a couple of samples. They don't necessarily have to be from the same lot or the same manufacturer, but they basically all kind of have the same attributes. And if, the, if you normalize the frequency response in a various set of them, you'll see that one end or the other, they tend to deviate quite a bit. The point of a microphone and some of these applications where you want to make use of their high performance, you want as flat a frequency response as possible. Now, these samples that you see, the ECM sets one and two, these devices, they're not shape response devices. They weren't created to provide this kind of behavior. They're just inconsistent. And so if you wanted to create a system that can provide an application like beamforming, then you want to have as flat a frequency response as possible. And that's what the MEMS technology brings to. So you also mentioned sensitivity earlier as well. So how do these two different microphone technologies stack up in this case? Yes, we looked at quite a bit of published data and then had a chance to evaluate our own characteristics and our qualification. And what we found is that really with every sample of the ECM products, there's a wild deviation with temperature. And as you can imagine, temperature fluctuations, especially in the automotive environment, are pretty common. And if you want to achieve the highest possible sensitivity and you want to be consistent and provide them the best performance for like a beamforming application, for example, you know, if not beamforming, then noise cancellation. And this is typically achieved through software. And so if you have a very stable input signal that's consistent over temperature, then you're able to provide these really higher level operations, higher level functionalities with the microphone. If you have a lot of swinging and variation over temperature, you can expect that the performance of the system, especially if you're trying to achieve these things via software, will be affected and the performance will, will be greatly reduced. So let's talk about Infineon's Zensive MEMS microphones. This solution can serve a variety of automotive applications, right? Well, it's a hope too. We have several devices now and generations one and two. A single backplate design is now available in production as well as our original dual backplate design. We're trying to address as many applications as possible. And there are several emerging right now, both on the interior and the exterior. We have this AEC qualified microphone and we're trying to fit as to many applications as possible. And there's subtle differences, subtle needs for each one of these applications that must be addressed. Okay, so what specific benefits does this solution bring to the table? Well, when we're, say, looking at an automotive requirement or, let's say, an automotive application in general, the first attribute of the part which we wanted to address, the, the largest value that we wanted to bring to the market, was here we have a fully AEC Q103 qualification. Now, this is a standard a spec that was created specifically for microphones. And so we are the first to actually achieve this qualification and fulfill the OEM requirements. And the second benefit really is the temperature range. You know, we've, we've taken our world-class consumer product and we've automotive qualified it so that we have an increased temperature range of negative 40 to 105 C. And on top of that, we have this very flexible use in different environments. So let's say within the vehicle, you might expect to have some humidity and some dust well, this particular single backplate design is actually IP57 compliant, which is a standard for the environmental conditions. And in this instance, the device is not going to find itself susceptible to some particulate and humidity in the, in the air. And of course, most importantly in automotive is that you don't change anything mid-platform. Long-term availability is a massive requirement in the automotive space. So in many cases, the ECM products will be discontinued and a new part will take its place. And as you saw on the prior slide, there could be wild deviations in how those microphones are performing from one lot to the next. And if you're trying to achieve a complex thing like beamforming and really isolate the driver's voice from the other passengers or noise cancellation, where you have someone in the back seat that you don't want to be part of the call, by changing the microphone and changing the characteristics of it, even though it's in the same package, it's not the same device. So we're providing a, a long-term availability with this product and having it automotive qualified. The part that you put into the project from the very beginning will be the same part that you have at the end. And then lastly is the performance. You know, we're striving for high acoustic overpressure and high signal-to-noise ratio with very little distortion, 
We want very narrow sensitivity management between one part to the next, which is to say that in the reel, each microphone will be matched carefully to the one next to it. And then lastly, of course, is the low frequency roll off. If you want to achieve noise cancellation, you're not likely going to be able to do that with a condenser microphone, certainly not as easily as you can with MEMS. So with our MEMS product, we can optimize it for noise cancellation. So James, what kind of options does Infineon offer within this family? When you look at all the part numbers, it's, it can be a little confusing, I'm sure. I mean, you, all these IM67, 6466, 6463, there's a, a lot of variation there. And so starting from the left on this slide, this is the original dual backplate design. This is a device that was in the consumer market, very popular, and it's designed for speech applications. The low frequency roll off is around 28 hertz. That's so it's clearly designed for voice. Whereas the part directly to the right of that in the second generation, these all now in green are IP57 rated. So they have this environmental capability to them. Now these are mid performance and low cost. So the low frequency roll off is a little better to give you a little more performance at the sensitivity signal to noise ratio is around 68 dB. And the acoustic overpressure is still at 130. So very robust mid-performance microphone. And then next you have the IM66. And this is the D130 and D120. This is a, an acoustic overpressure of 130 or 120, depending on the part number. And here you have a part that's specifically designed for speech and active noise cancellation. So the low frequency roll off is now at seven Hertz. And let's say you want something that's not so specific for speech or not so specific for active noise canceling, but something in between, and that's where you get the IM64. So the IM64 D130 and the D120A, this has the capability of kind of doing it all. And then lastly, is the IM63 D135. So here we have an interesting combination, very low, low frequency roll off at seven Hertz. But you notice in this instance, the acoustic overpressure is at 135. And this might seem insane, but that's because you're trying to buck the sound of wind. So if you were going to use a microphone in an external application, and it might be on the outside of the vehicle, then you could find yourself getting a lot of wind noise. And most of your signal then would be riding above the noise of the wind. So you have to have something that has a little higher acoustic overpressure point. In the future, we'll expand the product line to include more safety-related attributes with diagnostic capabilities. And we hope to also bring about a vibration sensor. Fantastic. So, James, can you share a couple of examples of the Zensive microphones in real-world applications? Yeah, it was part of a prior slide. You saw all the pretty pictures of different applications. And that's because we tend to separate them between external and internal. So outside of the vehicle, believe it or not, we're seeing a lot of emerging applications for emergency vehicle detection, which is really siren detection, as well as external voice actuation. Instead of waving your foot around and trying to raise the lift gate of a vehicle, you can use your voice to open it. And as well, detecting road conditions or vandalism is another emerging application. We're also looking seriously at the uh, ADOS aspect of it, the safety aspect of hearing car. As you start to introduce active noise cancellation, you're now perhaps limiting the ability of the driver to detect emergency vehicles or other potential distractions while they're driving. With our hearing car demo, we have a module that contains four microphones, and we have a module which identifies the direction which the siren is coming from. This was built in cooperation with a company called Serence, and they created the AI, making it possible to take the inputs from the microphones, look at the phases of them, identify the frequency, and then match that to a potential emergency vehicle siren, providing you an indicator, a lighted indicator, which would tell you from what direction that siren is coming from. So this is a potential use case that we see coming, and I suspect it'll grow especially as we strive to keep the environment inside of the vehicle quieter. We want to make sure that the driver is aware of any potential emergency situations or police and fire vehicles, as well as ambulances, so that their conditions in the vehicle put them in a position where they're blind to what's really going on on the outside. 
Now, let's say on the inside of the vehicle, applications like beam forming and just speech within the cabin are really emerging to kind of give a premium experience for not just the driver, but everyone in the vehicle. So the beam forming application allows you to have uh, basically an office in your car and you can eliminate the external sounds and distractions and noises that might be picked up on the microphone simply through software. And here you can use multiple microphones, look at their phases, and then eliminate the influences, the sounds coming from places other than where the driver's at. We have a nice demonstrator for this in cooperation with one of our partners where we show the signals from each one of these microphones. And you can, with the demonstrator, basically direct the volume that's being produced from one microphone to the other, excluding then the influence of noise coming from the other two microphones, kind of triangulating, if you will, the intended speaker. It just gives a nice visual reference as to what can be achieved with MEMS microphones and good software. Now, if my audience is ready to get started using the Zensive MEMS microphones, what kind of evaluation boards do you guys offer? So we have right down to just single devices, if you like. We found, though, is these microphones are awfully small, so you don't necessarily expect everyone to be able to make solder pads for them. Now, the best way to evaluate the part is probably in our flex kit. So in here, we have a little flexible PCB that has the microphone already attached, and then you can put it onto an evaluation board and look at the PDM output or the analog output, depending on the kit that you have. And if you want to do something, say, external to the vehicle, we have a, an A2B kit where there's A2B transceivers involved and eight different microphones from two different pods. The nice thing about these particular pods is their backsides have magnets in them and you can position them on the vehicle. And of course, there's not any wind resistance provided there. It's intended to take data with but it will give you the ability to differentiate sounds from different directions and record them using A to B, which seems to be the more popular interface. And next we have a, a couple of hubs that allow you to take data in the, both the digital realm and the analog, depending on your preference, and to evaluate then how the microphones are performing. Fantastic. Well, James, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you very much for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section at the EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE.